When I bought this place, it was basically an open rectangular space. There were just a couple of closets, an old corner kitchen, and that was it. So here's the cabinet fully closed. Perhaps the most interesting feature is the bed. Initially, we were looking at different ways that we could start to sort of subdivide the space into kind of smaller spaces. But pretty quickly, it became clear that there wasn't really enough room to get a, like a real bedroom in here. And if you did, then there wasn't really room to, to have a real living room area. And Eric is a pretty serious cook, and so there wasn't really a, a way to kind of to get like a tiny little kitchen in here. That wouldn't really work for him. So we started to think about sort of ways that we could sort of dramatically increase the density of the amount of stuff that we could get in here by really creating sort of areas of overlap where you get like a living area and a bed area and a kind of dining area and a lounge area. And they're, they're not necessarily separate, but they're, they're sort of leaking into one another in a, in a way. This door of the bed can be kept this way just to provide darkness and privacy to the bed on the other side, but it can also open up to pr provide light and air. Um, and for that matter, this pushes in. And then this serves as a desk at this point and we have storage for the desk. Then over here we have closets on this side as well. And uh, in fact, maximizing the storage space, there's even a door over here that opens up to use the space beneath the counter. <laughs> At this point, this is the bedroom here, whereas before it was the entertainment room, the living room. I get a lot of pleasure out of seeing the apartment in its different contexts. Do you get a sense that there's a real separation of space? Absolutely. Um, especially that this door comes out and pushes in. Um, maybe the, the best example of that is when I have guests stay over. Um, this is very convenient here, this couch, because um, these back pillows come off and then you have a single bed here. So I can give my guests, even in this 400 square foot apartment, a relatively private space. Once that opens all the way, I certainly can't see on this side and a guest can't see to the bed area. So there's some privacy. So one of the things that we wanted to start to do here to start to break up some of the surfaces. These aluminum bars, they give us a way to be able to operate all of the different panels without having any extra handles. We were really happy to start to think a little bit about how to get light and air through some of the solid surfaces. And so this is actually just a off the shelf perforated steel that we've lacquered. The holes are just sized just right to, to pass a computer cable through. Uh, one of the things that we were looking to do is to to really to, to maximize some of the different service opportunities. And so, for instance, there's lighting and electrical embedded in, into the cabinets. And then actually most of the lighting for this room is located at the top of the, at the, top of the cabinet. We have two sets of lights there. In a space this small, we didn't want to see any light fixtures either. We just wanted there to be light. I don't think that this is that unusual amount of, of space either. I think it's more of a matter of being able to use the same amount of space for lots of different purposes that makes the apartment work. So one of the things that we really like about the space is that this, the desk, when the cabinet is completely closed, the, the desk works as a kind of a console or a bar. So um, often when Eric has people over, He'll set up sort of snacks and cocktails so that the guests can sort of help themselves and um, he can tend to things that are in the kitchen. Have, have some chocolate <laughs> cookies if you want. Because the cabinet is so deep, there's storage embedded into both ends. At this end we have uh, kitchen storage and then at the opposite end of the cabinet is library storage. That was one of the other things that we were trying to do is reduce the number of active surfaces in, in the apartment because there's one thing that is kind of big. We liked very much for the surface of it to be relatively clean and, and unobstructed. So it's quite nice to be able to 
sort of both store all of his home office equipment um, and, and sort of uh, files down here, and then, and then his book collection up here. Here we are in the kitchen. There are two small under cabinet refrigerators. There's really nowhere in this space to have a full size refrigerator. One of the things that we wanted to be able to do was to build a pretty generous bar area. So this was like the obvious place to, to put the refrigerators. All of the cabinetry sort of conceals something. So the dishwasher is here. As a general sort of design strategy, what we're trying to do is also kind of reduce the number of times that you see stuff. Uh, and so I guess we go to something that is a little bit like minimalism uh, as, a, as a kind of default position. But one of the things that we also wanted to start to do is to kind of use the, the hiding or the concealing of things as, as a little bit of a design opportunity. These are adjustable shelves and they're lit up here, but then there's a acrylic panel that we made that slides and, and it lights up nicely. And so at night you can actually get a little bit of a red glow from this corner of the kitchen. I spent my first year out of college teaching in Japan, so I think Japanese sensibilities influenced my sense of space a little bit. I mean, this kind of works, this compact way. This is very comfortable for me. I feel the idea of excess space, it just... I like everything being meaningful, and I, and I feel in this particular sort of space, everything is meaningful. I suppose, I mean, I, I would be careful about any more linens. I have linens up there. Um, not that I, I need more. I like having to make choices. I mean, I, I do have to make choices. The KitchenAid mixer. This is my choice. It takes up quite a bit of space, but I like to cook. Everything is here for a reason. That's how I want it to be. I, I do keep the food processor beneath the sink. You know, I have extra storage that ends up doubling as recycling before I bring it to the basement. I wouldn't mind, I suppose, if I ended up with a little more dry goods storage. Part of the reason is that we have the, the microwave oven there. But we're actually talking about possibly having a rack in here that would roll out and that will at least make it easier to get at things. I, I like having everything for a purpose not a matter of just bringing things in because I have it or I can have it. I, I, ah, I get overwhelmed by too much. A lot of the work of my office, because we work in New York, a lot of times we're working at a scale that's somewhere between being furniture and being architecture. Until we had done this project, we, we hadn't really done anything quite this complex, but since then we've done actually quite a lot in sort of this vein where we're looking at kind of like partitions that really start to do double duty as kind of storage pieces or are thinking about how to embed electronics or embed other kind of services like lighting and, and even plumbing into, into sort of like these, these kind of freestanding units. Most people in New York are operating under a, I mean it's a really expensive city, so in order to make a space work for people in New York, I think that things have to be double duty. There's really an idea about how do you get more out of something smaller without having to make big sacrifices in terms of the way that your lifestyle is. In addition to not sacrificing, you hope that, that something like this enhances someone's life, that it doesn't just make something that is less better. More is more. <laughs>